Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Aloysius Parish on this third Sunday of Lent. A warm welcome to all of you joining us from your homes and to our celebrant this morning, Father Jean-Marc Laporte. Readings this morning may be found on page 223 of your Sunday Missal. I invite everyone to stand. The opening hymn number is 604. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angels of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Moses looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, 
I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burnt up. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called out to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, <coughs> I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But Moses said to God, If I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What? is his name. What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said to further, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my memorial for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song is. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to wander, and abounding 
abounding in steadfast love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. The Lord is merciful and gracious.
burning bush or golden cat, which will it be? Today's first reading tells us about one of the most significant moments in salvation history. It was significant for Moses because it changed the course of his life. It was significant for the Hebrew people because as a result, Moses led them out of Egypt towards the promised land. It is significant for us because we too are on a journey, mission by Jesus Christ, and we need to hear God's voice as Moses did. <clears throat> as we know, Moses was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter and raised in the court of Egypt. He had the assurance of a young man brought up to be a leader. But an impulse of anger led him to murder an Egyptian who was maltreating one of his own people. And he had to escape from the Pharaoh who would have killed him and spent many years as a shepherd in a place far enough from Egypt to be safe. Now this may have been for him a period of quiet reflection as he tended the flock entrusted to him, of maturation, of preparation for an experience that would transform his life. Now, one day he was shepherding his flock on the slopes of Mount Horeb and noticed a bush that was burning without being consumed by the flames. What is going on? He, just, he said. And he decided, I will find out. But this led to a mysterious encounter which he was not expecting and over which he had absolutely no control. God called him out of the burning bush. God had attracted him with this unusual phenomenon, but now wanted to show his transcendence. <clears throat> he attracted them, but then he said to him, <clears throat> do not come any closer. Remove your sandals. Now, use your imagination to feel what it would be like to be in your bare feet in rocky terrain. You can't move around easily <clears throat> as you can when wearing shoes or sandals. You become vulnerable and lose much of your power to protect yourself. Now, Moses experienced this in the presence of God, his usual defenses crumbled. So God begins by identifying himself as the same God the Hebrews had worshipped since Abraham and promised that he would lead his people out of Egypt to a land of milk and honey. Moses recognized in him the God of his own tribe, but then wanted to know his proper name. Knowing the name of persons in the culture of that time meant having some control over them, having access to their inner mystery. You could call their name, draw their attention to yourself, and initiate a relationship. And the people he was going to lead would want to know that name. Who is this God that is calling us through the desert into the promised land? What is his name? But again, God proved mysterious and elusive. He did not give Moses the answer Moses was expecting. 
God's answer was, I am who am. In other words, a non-answer. So, he is not a tribal deity, just like any other tribal deity, not a being along, alongside the many other beings that exist in the universe, but being itself, being with a capital B, being at its most intense. He was telling Abraham, you will never understand or grasp my mystery. I do not belong to the category of beings with names that you are familiar with. Do not try to grasp me, but allow me to grasp you. My grasp will not stifle or destroy you. I am all-powerful and all-merciful, and I will care for you and for your people. <clears throat> now, the lesson God was teaching Moses would take centuries to seep in, and we are still plumbing its depths. The Hebrews would eventually learn <clears throat> that this God, this mysterious God, who looked after them, <clears throat> it was a universal God who creates everything that exists and who cares not just for Hebrews, but for every human being on this earth. With this experience of God, which humbled him and put him in his proper place as a totally dependent creature, <clears throat> Moses was ready for his mission to lead his people out of Egypt through the desert toward the promised land. Now, like, they, like Moses, the people he led needed to be tempered and to come to a deeper insight into their God. And many times in the desert, the people wanted to turn away from this difficult deity they could not control. At one point, they started worshiping a golden calf with which they felt much more comfortable. The same applies to the followers of Jesus today. His apostles were often obtuse and in Jesus' final hours, they deserted him. They wanted to reduce him to their own narrow understanding of God's purpose for his Messiah. Now today, Christians often forget who they are and who God is. Now we like to claim that our church is holy and endowed with many gifts, but recent events have impressed upon us that its members, even those dedicated to holiness, are sinful, and that they sometimes strive to sweep the sin under the carpet. The outer trappings of holiness can become a golden calf. This also applies to us personally. <clears throat> like Moses and the Hebrew people, we need to spend time in the desert to allow ourselves, through the ups and downs of our lives, to be burning, to be, to, to be like the bush Moses discovered, burning but not consumed. Now that fire is love, which is at the very heart of God's mystery. And that love is a tough love that challenges us to the very roots, but which transforms and enhances our being. Now we recognize that we have no control over God. He is not to be manipulated or appeased. We cannot flee from his presence. We realize that our trying to deal with God as one being deals with another being is an empty pretense. 
We simply let God be. We allow his mystery to envelop us and to grasp us. And above all, we resist the temptation to build for ourselves a golden calf which we can worship in a nice, controlled sort of way. <clears throat> to live in the pretense that we can manipulate and appease God so that he will not come too close. Now, in our culture, we do not need to build a golden calf. There are so many of them close at hand and they constantly entice us. So we wrestle with God throughout our lives whether we want to or not. Now during Lent, let us go to the desert with Moses and take on this struggle with greater intensity and awareness. Let us allow God to be God the mystery that escapes our grasp. <clears throat> Rather than fight the pattern of our lives, seek escape from it, let us treasure it, let us embrace its mystery. Let us not build a golden calf, but contemplate God as a burning bush. Indeed, ourselves become a burning bush, a flame with God's love, but not consumed by it. To be our genuine selves in the presence of God's utter mystery is the most beautiful mission we can receive from God, and each one of us has received it. And so let us celebrate that mission in our Eucharist today. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the church, called to be an agent of transformation, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For healing in all the shattered places on this earth, especially in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel lost and abandoned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be faithful witnesses to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish family and among our loved ones who are ill, suffering or in convalescence, especially Carol Dion, Shirley McArdle, Clarice Mascarenas, John Henry, 
Monica Vallin, Bobby Squires, Maria Maloney, and Father Joe Sullivan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. We also pray in a special way for Marina Chancy, Madame Cécile Ladine's family and friends, for Rita Marocco on the 17th anniversary of her passing, for the healing of Pierce Corsi, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mother Mary to join us in our petitions. Hail Mary, for the Lord is The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. The offertory hymn is 489. 489. 489. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor and so help to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Joke. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most sac blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
your spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Yes, there's a few. As of this week, Father Jean-Pierre Couturier will no longer be the parochial administrator of Marie Auxiliatrice Mission and Domenico Savio Mission. He has been appointed as parochial administrator at St. Catherine de Sienne in NDG. He will continue to be the parochial administrator of St. Aloysius Parish. We are extremely grateful that he has agreed to stay with us. We wish him the best on his new journey. There will be a free concert for peace at Notre Dame Basilica in Old Montreal on Tuesday, March the 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Among the performers will be Ukrainian-Canadian pianist Serhi Salov. I hope I pronounce his name okay. You may make a donation for Ukraine at the entrance. All are invited. Joanne spoke to Father Joe yesterday. He sounds good, says he feels fine, and hopes to be leaving the hospital in about two weeks. He will then move in with Father Peter, and he thanks us very much for our continued prayers. So, a little bit of good news. Ah, but we have even better news. On the 22nd, is the birthday of Stanley Bardo and on the 25th that of Margaret Nicolitsi. So, we say Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Six seven three. Six seven three. Six seven three. <laughs> 